I would like you first to know. So there is a software that you can activate to do the street lighting. Uh, the second thing I want to do, guys, is um, I, I have my site light here um, with that CAD fixture that we use. And I want you, I just want to show you, we're going to be talking about uh, R3 fixtures and the way they throw the light uh, uh, horizontal or straight in front of them and so forth. So these are the components I'm going to be, I'm going to be talking about. Um, having said that, here's what I would like you guys to at least um, uh, go over. So chapter chapter nine talks about three lights. I summarize these guys for you in a PDF file that will be on a network. So when we talk about street lights, a couple of things I would like you guys to know. We have the residential, we have commercial, and we have highways. So typically, three types of streets or roads that you can do calculation. Obviously, if you have a residential street, you're not going to put a big floodlight right into the residential street. So the first and the most important thing when it comes to street lights is you have to know, is this street in a city street, is it an alley, a street, a boulevard, or is it an estate highway? Um, or uh, what's the speed limit on it? These are a big factor on the choice of the light that they put in highways. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? The type of the highway. Okay. When it comes to to, to street lights, you are it's when we do street lights, it's you're not meant it's not meant to sit there under the street light in the middle of the night and read a newspaper. Everybody understand? Like parking lot. Parking lot not light is not meant for you to go there and sit and read. It's meant for you to drive safely and see the pedestrians as you drive in these alleys and streets and highways, as well as the cars in the front of you and right next to you. That's the intention of the street lights. Everybody understand that one, that intention? That's why the foot candle is small. Okay, so that's a big deal. So we have residential commercial highways. The second thing you need to, uh, to be aware of when it comes to street, there's something called glare, discomfort, and disability. When you're driving an interstate highways, guys, I don't know how many of you have seen these floodlights that blind you. Anybody have driving a country road, especially country roads, and somebody's coming with their beams, the high beams are on, and it blinds you, right? You, every, all, every one of us encounter this. So when you're driving, when you're driving, when you're designing a lighting system for highways and street, factor number one is glare, glare. Glare, there are two different types of glare. There's one that discomfort glare that makes me uncomfortable when I'm driving. And the other one is disability glare. Disability glare makes you unable to drive. You cannot see at all. Can I have a thumbs up, Chad? We, could, we fully understand that when we do street lights, we have to pay attention to disability, to, come, to, to glare. A glare, two types. Discomfort is okay. You can just feel discomfort. Disability is will will on you will not be able to drive. You will not be able to drive with this one. So that's what I want to mention. Uh, when it comes to uh, poles and uh, poles and uh, pole location, guys, typically you can go from 10 feet all the way to 30 feet, 10 feet in streets and, and alleys, 10 feet into 30 feet high. Uh, sit back. The way they put them, you've seen them in alleys. They sit in back typically three feet, right, of the curb, three feet, and you put your, for typically three feet set back, and you have your light sitting at 10 up to 30 feet high. So these are the mounting in residential. Uh, fixtures that you use in a residential 30 to 75 watt, you're not going to, in the residential, alleys and streets, you're not going to go use 250 watt metal headlight. Anybody knows why? It, 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 you're going to have a, a spill over and people are going to be pissed off at you because they can't sleep because of that light. So they use smaller watt fixtures that can give certain amount of light enough to, meet, to, meet, uh, enough to make it comfortable for people to drive around and also for security reasons, right? That's why we use street lights. So be aware, 30 to 75 watt, the height of the, the pole, 10 to 30 feet, uh, sit back, everybody knows the sit back, sit back from the curb here. Um, uh, three feet, uh, fixture type. Then the most important thing is these three types of fixture. They have fixture type one, two, and three. These are, do you guys remember how the fixture has um, um, a way of throwing light lumens in the front of it? Is it his, if, is it throwing this way, this way, or back, right? Throwing front only, front and, and, and extended, or front and back? 
that's a big deal when it comes to the street. Why? Because if you want a fixture uh, that just lit the street, you don't want it to lit also the, the front yard of somebody's neighborhood uh, or somebody's yard, right? And get, get upset with you. So it becomes type one, type two, and type three becomes a big, big, big deal there. I'll talk a, a lot about them. So summarize, when you do streets, you have to pay attention, are you doing residential streets, commercial, industrial, highways, right? Because you have different things. You have to pay attention to the glare, and the glare are two types. Discomfort, it makes you uncomfortable to drive. Disability, you will be unable to drive because of the light. The light is so bright, right into your eyes. That's what a glare is, right? The light is shining right into your eyes. Uh, poles that we do, poles and location 10 to 30 feet, sit back 1 to, one to 1 feet. Uh, the reason why we sit it back sometimes and the whole types is because of spill over. They call it light spill over. You don't want the light. You want to lit the street, the middle of the street. You do not want to lit the front yard of the neighbor in front of you or the neighbor behind you, right? Does that make sense? When we have the software, guys, it's really cool because you can play with it and you can tell the actual foot candle on the in the middle of a neighbor's yard how it's going to be the minimum that you have to maintain. So you can sit and orient your fixture to get you um, no spillover. Bloomington is notoriously famous of spillover, guys, for lights, street lights, and, and, and parking lot lights. So, Okay, so that's basically the whole deal about the commercial. Um, when it comes to types of, of fixtures, they have type 1, type 2, and type 3. And I'm going to talk a little bit about these types, type 1, 2, and 3. Here's how they type um, type... Type 1 fixture, they call it residential, guys. And if you look at, do me a favor, will you? If, you, if you're looking on page, uh, page uh, 70, uh, 74, has a picture of how it, it distributes the power, how it distributes the power. Layout with key points. Okay, so um, Jeff, here's how they do it. Can you just see that picture here? So they put a pole, a 30-foot pole, right? And an arm, have you guys seen how many, we all seen it, right? We have an arm that extend all the way and they drop the fixture. They put the fixture right in the middle of the street. So the fixture is shooting light right in the middle of the street through this arm, right? And then the, the light will stretch the width of the street only. It doesn't spill over to this neighbor or the neighbor behind. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? That's, they call it type one. Typically residential, Re typically residential. Can you guys see how the fixture, everybody can see where the fixture is sitting right in here. Here's my fixture sitting right here, giving light. And can you guys see how the, the pattern of distribution of light, everybody can see the pattern of distribution of light. It's stretched to the width of the highway. Then I can put another baby here, and this baby is going to sit here, and it's going to have its own pattern of distribution right over here. Okay, and that's, and you keep going all these fixtures, depending how much you want and what's the regulation in your area. Can you guys see that? So I want to remind you that Chad's house in this area and Jamie's house in this area are not going to have any light pollution. Can I have a thumbs up how important this not spilling light over to the neighbor's front yard? Cool? That's type one. Dwelling. Type two, type two, they call it commercial, guys. Commercial two lane roads give or take, commercial two-lane roads. So you put that one here, and you can see you don't put it right in the middle of it. Can you guys see that? It goes bigger. So type one, you, you throw it right in the middle of the street, right, or with an arm, right? Type two, you put them right here with a little a two feet, two foot uh, arm, two foot arm and shooting, and it will shoot all the way to cover the streets and a little bit behind here and a little bit here because it's commercial area. So you need uh, you need sidewalks. Commercial areas tend to have sidewalks. So what they do, guys, is they have, it, it throws a little bit of light here and here to cover the streets as well as the sidewalk. Because it's commercial. We don't have people sleeping at night there, hopefully. Type, three, type, three, type, type, type two will give you a little bit of sidewalks, but type three is really the way the, the sidewalks become, become a major thing. Okay, so type um, type three takes it to the next level. Type three, if you can see, they put it on a little bit of arm, and it throws it throws too much for, forward and backward. Can you guys see how backward it's showing here? So you put it on boulevards and street that has uh, sidewalks. So it will lift the sidewalk as well as the street. Jeff, any comments, any questions about that?
So that's kind of the typical distribution of these. Typical distribution. If you guys want to, uh, if you remember, side type one, it distributes this way. Type two, it switch it this way and a little bit back. Type three, it goes further back and forward in the throwing the light. Does that make sense? When you guys, so that's basically what the three types. It doesn't matter if you look at, when you're looking at my graphic, because when you guys did my, um, when we did visual, I want to show you when we did our visual um, right in here. Here's a, here's a fixture that you guys used. Can you guys see, this is a type three fixture. Everybody can see it, R3. Everybody can see guys, this is the type three fixture. Can you see the type three fixture? It threw a lot of light in this area as well as forward, type three fixture. If you were to change it to type two, it will throw less light. Type one, it will throw even, stretch it this way and, and, and cut, cuts it off. Any comments, any questions? Any comments, any questions? So that's basically it in terms of, of, um, of throwing the light and the distribution of light. Thanks God for these software guys, because now all these graphics that comes with it, the contour line, this will give me zero point, that level of a zero point, point uh, or point um, five foot candle. So I can tell this point is point five, and anything in between is more than point five, so I'm good to go. Any comments about the distribution of light, R1, type one, type two, and type three? When you have a soft, when you use them, um, for, hi for highways, guys, it becomes even bigger because now, especially streets um, in residential areas, you do not want to spill the light into the neighbor's bedroom. It's a big deal. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show a few things. Again, we don't do the lights. Um, we don't have any project that we can do street lights. It will be nice to do it at one time. Okay, so that's, these are generally speaking, the three types that you're gonna be looking at. Generally speaking, again, there's a whole lot of things. And um, what's in terms of highways, guys? So the other thing I wanna mention, guys, is in terms of the highways, when you get your highways, okay, there you go. Um, so when, when it comes to the, your highways, you can get um, watts from 175 to 400, exactly like parking lot. Now we're getting into, into highways, not streets. Streets, we say 75 to 150 watts typically. You get into a highway, get bigger watts. Why bigger watts, more lumens? You want to lift more lumens. Um, for highways, again, here's the watts. And for, even for highways, you can, these floodlights that you put them in the intersection, you guys have seen them. They have a, a thought, 1KW fixtures there. 1KW, huge, huge floodlights. Um, Minimum foot candle is 0.5. Does that sound familiar to you guys? Minimum foot candle when they maintain them in the street, 0.5 minimum. They like a couple of averages here in uh, highways. They like the average to be three to one between um, average to minimum and in residential six to one, in residential six to one. Who cares? That would be the, basically the average value to the minimum value will be the darkest point to the average brightest point is six to one. Everybody knows what the average is? Average minimum, uh, average to minimum ratio is the average brightest point compared to the minimum darkest point is six to one. In highways, it's a little bit strict, three to one, give or take. Any comments, guys, about these recommendations? Any comments? Well, our, for our project, uh, David, if you remember in the parking lot, I believe we asked for four to one, uh, average to minimum, if I remember right. And the minimum of 0. 0.5. We want a minimum of 0. 0.5. Any comments, any questions? Any comments, any questions? So that's basically it in terms of that particular boy. The rest is not, um, this is not for you guys. I don't think in, uh, it's for a different situation, okay? Okay. Any comments, any questions before I finish with that one? That's the only thing I really would like you to know about is the pattern, the distribution pattern of these fixtures, the mounting height, and the glare, the glare. Um, that, luckily, when we guys went to visual, as I said, you in visual, you're gonna find a couple of fixtures where you can, um, um, when you go to, when you go new fixtures, I think it's gonna take us to all these CAD, 
I don't know if you guys can see here is R2, R3, R4, different distribution, uh, different pattern of distribution of fixtures. When you go to CAD, um, R1, 2, 3, and even 4. And you can try them and see how the distribution is going to go. So if I'm going to go load uh, R2, for example, I loaded an R2 here and um, give it a distribution pattern of 0.5 and then go change my fixture here um, from, let's just say, this fixture. I'm going to change that type of fixture to a different, it's R, let's see what R is this one now. This is R3. I'm going to go change this one into R2 and see what pattern, distribution pattern I'm going to get and compare them. Can you guys see how R2 gives you a different different contribution pattern? So it shoots, it, it shrinks. Can you guys see this is R2 distribution compared to R3? Shrink a little bit. So anyway, so one, two, three, and if you go grab an R2, it's just for the heck of it, grab uh, another fixture. R1. Anybody see an R1? R2, 3, 4. Let's do an R4 for the heck of it. R4. Grab uh, and see what R4 is going to give me a distribution pattern. Um, and close it. And I'm going to go change that fixture, uh, this particular fixture, into an R4. Um, okay, right click here and go change it. Here's an R4 and see. Where's my R4, Chad? Did I not load it? Okay, let me see. Where's my R4? I didn't load it. Hmm. Okay, what did I do? No, let's go to R4. Okay, pattern. Okay, it. Yes, I bet you I put cancel. Okay, and then um, just quick here, uh, grab that one and change it to R4 and see what the pattern distribution is going to go. Uh, this particular one here is R4, and granted. Look at R4. It shoots. Can you guys see how it, it, it focuses it this way? Yeah. So anyway, there's a lot of patterns that you can come up with. So you can, uh, when you do your calculation, guys, you're going to pick the pattern that gives you, if you're going to throw forward, pick the one that gives you more forward or backward and so forth. Any comments, any questions? Any comments, any questions about this? So that's all what I have for you in terms of um, highway. I wish we have the highway up and running. You guys can, if you have your trial here, it did not end. You can open it. It really, um, when you use it, 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 you can do a rendering and it shows how it's going to look, look at night and the glare. The most important thing is they have, a, they have a factor in the roadway calculation called glare. And they give you the percentage of glare. The higher the percentage, the worse the glare will be. Um, and there's certain percentage in highways you have to maintain. Otherwise, it, you wouldn't feed, meet the standard because you don't want people driving and getting into accidents because of glare. When you situate the fixture, they always tell you guys in the highways, you don't want to situate him right in front of the driver. So if the highway is coming this way, I don't want the, the light to shine right into their faces. You kind of hide the fixture and let it shine downward. Highly unlikely that Adam is driving down 494 and looking up there at the fixture. But if you're looking straight, it could be right in your face. And they're, they're not sure, huh? Okay, that's all I have, guys, for you. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna switch into um, indoor lighting, which is really interesting topic. Indoor lighting. So I'm gonna give you five minutes quick, and uh, to switch, and we'll do indoor lighting. Thank you.